Um, thanks for coming along. Um, uh, we have, a, uh, as I put in the broadcast, a two for one offer. So uh, I hope you have your frequent shopper card and Larry can supply the card with all the electronics in it. No, you'll find out about that in a minute. Um, we've got two aspects to the, uh, the talk tonight. Uh, the very first one is from uh, Larry, VK7WLH, on near field communication. Uh, which is absolutely fascinating, and uh, how Larry's uh, using this technology uh, in his uh, in his company. So uh, that's the first part of the talk, and then the second part of the talk is Scott VK7LXX on his work on uh, the FSQ beacon. Uh, and FSQ, uh, if you've been following or listening to uh, the repeater <laughs> on a Friday night uh, at eight o'clock, yep. it's eight o'clock. Uh, you'll uh, be hearing uh, um, all sorts of uh, comments um, and if you're listening to uh, 145225, mm -hmm. there you go, um, uh, you'll be hearing some, some very weird digital signals uh, from a mode called FSQ and Scott will take us through what that's all about and the beacon. And can I just do a plug for Martin as well? Um, if you're uh, wanting some chilies for your cooking, uh, please uh, please take some. Uh, you probably don't want to rub your eyes after when you've taken them, though. Just warning. Me. So uh, across to Larry. Okay, let me get out of the spotlight here. Um, I've been tinkering with NFC technology for a while, and uh, Justin saw me and said, "What's that?" And so we talked about it, and so here I am. Um, essentially, it's near field communication, and you use it pretty much uh, every day or a couple of times a week when you use your pay pass or your pay wave, except that I'm going to be showing you the other direction. Um, just a little background, local wireless tools, did I spell that properly? Yes. Wi-Fi we all know and love or don't, and Bluetooth of course requires pairing but it's good for local connections. RFID is something that you hear about and unless you're involved in certain industries you may not know much about it. Um, this is used for example to uh, track cows from uh, paddock to plate, and so there are a lot of people making money selling cow tags, and um, it records different information and uh, can be rewritten and all sorts of things. You also can put the RFID tags, which are fairly large. Most of them are passive, some of them are active, meaning they have batteries in them, so when you activate it, it really sends a strong signal back, but you can actually, through anti-collision technology, you can actually read all the cartons on a pallet at one shot. So there's all kinds of very interesting stuff, particularly in warehousing and logistics support that uh, uses RFID, which is done at a distance. And near field is uh, what we're talking about. That's the uh, that's going to be everywhere. It actually is starting to be everywhere now, but it's really interesting. Uh, what is it? And there you go. It's uh, enabled in most phones and on a fairly low level and if you want to get some free applications downloaded you can actually do a little more sophisticated use of the, uh, of the technology. All the 20 meter guys will be happy. It uh, works in the 13.56 megahertz uh, ISM band and uh, there are global standards. Um, most of them are being adhered to now because there's a lot of production. If your product doesn't meet spec, it just simply doesn't work. Uh, use an inductive magnetic field, I'll show you that in a little bit, to generate a signal, or excuse me, generate some voltage and current inside the tag. And um, it's better than, um, than Bluetooth from the perspective of you don't, have any, you don't have to do any pairing, you just tap it and go. It's a transponder, and this is what one of them looks like, but I'll be passing around some. And uh, essentially it's an antenna with a little chip on it and the chip is activated when there's a field induced into the antenna. The chip is activated and it can either, it can do a number of things, but for the most part, it'll end up going to uh, websites. Typically it's used for that application, but I'll tell you more about that. There you go. And the NFC enabled device is one of these <coughs> that you have in your pocket, or this is a commercial reader, which is much more sensitive than a phone and allows you to run some pretty sophisticated software behind it. Uh, this is for Rex's benefit. Um, <laughs> that's the schematic. 
So there's the antenna. I don't know where the pull-up resistor goes. It just goes into the ether somewhere, at least on this drawing. And uh, it <coughs> indicates essentially what happens when it uh, uh, happens upon an RF field. Uh, and then it initiates the start of frame, and there's a block of data which is transmitted to your phone. Um, tags. The tags I'm going to show you are type 2. Um, most of them are NXP tags. The chip maker is NXP. And then the NXP people, which make everything from these chips up to solid state microwave power amplifier blocks, modules, which are very expensive and very interesting. Um, most of them are 144 bytes. Most everything out there now is type 2. However, you notice how far some of the really big tags can go. And you can, I have a tag here with uh, a kilobit of uh, storage on it. Um, read and write, you can uh, say read only after you write to it. Um, I'm going to pass them out if you want. You can take some home. I've got a pile of them that I'm not using. That's a uh, circus. That's a small one here. I'll pass this around. That's that little one. Um, this is the, it's a dedicated piece of silicon, so I don't know if I call it an EEPROM or what, but um, this is the antenna with the ability to tune it by just simply changing the, uh, the pattern, basically, it's changing the inductor. This is a larger one, there's one on here as well. This is very sensitive, it's got a larger antenna and works well at longer distances. Also, this can go up to significant data storage capacity. Um, another style for a different application. Now, this is interesting stuff. Uh, the antenna size is 20 millimeter in diameter, and if you look at some of these things, the overall thickness is 136 microns, and etc. You can see what the, what's going on here. Here's the frequency in operation. This is the unloaded resonance frequency. This tag has about 50 puff as the input capacit capacitance. More specs. Um, that's where the IC is located. If you notice, all of that is in a very, this is the side look of the thing. It's very, very, uh, very, very thin. Um, an interesting thing is plus or minus two kilovolts for uh, static, electrostatic discharge. A 50 millimeter bending, it, uh, it works best when you don't bend it, but it's not bad. This is a comparison of the technology with other things. NFC is simple, instant, you just tap it and go. QR codes are one of those deals where you have to hold your phone and make sure it's focused and run an app and do all sorts of things. Uh, NFC is just much faster by a factor of two or three. No batteries. There's your uh, Bluetooth and your web browser. No typing is required. Now, this is some of the technology behind the tags. It gets more interesting. This is a little summary of NFC versus QR codes. It's taken over Korea. People are just shopping. They just walk up to a thing and go blink. And it, you can put a product under their phone and they walk to the, uh, to the cash register, lay their phone down, and it just subtracts money from their account. I think that's kind of interesting. One of the things which is going on is authentication. This is a very, very important development. I'm going to hand these around. Let's just take a look. There, I'll explain what those are. They're different formats. You can get them in wristbands. You can get them in, in rings, which are non-metallic. Um, it's basically what's underneath your, your uh, pay pass, your, your card, that technology. And uh, they can be applied for pretty much anything you want. This is a trusted tag with a much larger chip. Those are from NXP, and this is from Fujitsu. But what's different about this tag is that when it's activated by your phone, it sends out a, a data string which is much more sophisticated. It's encrypted. The normal tags will simply send out something like www with a domain name, etc., and it'll launch an application, for example, or launch an action, I should say. This is a jar with a label on it. I'll pass that around. And what that's doing, if we can see it, it's a little slow here. Uh, that's the REST website. No typing, no nothing involved. Just tap it, and you're done. REST in the jar. REST in the jar. <laughs> now, what you may note on the top of that one is a little round disc. Now, that is a plastic lid. However, you can't put the normal tags on a metallic lid. 
So what they have is something that looks like the refrigerator magnet material with an adhesive though, which sticks on a metallic lid and separates the tag from the metal. So there's enough distance to enable the induction of the field so that you actually generate enough current voltage to make it work. So I can put those on metal tags, of, uh, you'll see them shortly, um, <coughs> pretty well. Not as much distance, not as fast, but they do work. You may have to wiggle your phone around to find the sweet spot. And in your phone, the antenna that generates the field and receives the data is very light, what's in the back, and it's very likely on a battery. So they're equipped in many cases with a battery, and then they're just little gold contacts that come down and lock it in place. Uh, the trusted tag, which is coming out now from several vendors, is just amazing stuff. They have some kind of an EEPROM or a little processor, and um, I don't know how many times you can scan it, but I know that you can go up over 100. And every single time you scan it, it knows it was scanned, then it increments to the next code. So the codes are very long, uh, at least 32 bytes. It's made well in it, very long. And they change every single time. And what that means is we can ship this string back to an authentication server. The authentication server says, yes, that's the code we were expecting. That's good. And that code is deleted from the database or indicated as being used. If you, sub if you try to copy, which everybody's trying to do nowadays with these tags, you can copy the normal tag, but if in fact you copy one of the trusted tags and you send the same code again, it won't happen. It will reject cool. it as being used already. So it's a one-time use rolling code. It's the same kind of thing that's used in very, very high-value uh, high bank accounts. The kind of stuff in New York where you see some guy with a little dongle and pushes a button, generates a brand new code, and that's what he keys in to get into his building or get into his bank account. You probably wouldn't want to send your customers to that URL up there. Uh, probably not, now that you mention it. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you know that is the value of URL? <laughs> Anyhow, the trusted tags are where we're going for a very specific reason. Uh, applications. Most of the time, uh, for example, here's a, uh, a Reist card with a tag on the back, and if you scan it, it'll take you again, like the jar, to the Reist website. So. Uh, that's a large one. I just happen to have some of this because of work I'm doing. They come down as small as this, which is mm -hmm. one on the paper going around, which is pretty tiny. You've got to get very close to that one. Um, this is just some description of literally hundreds of kinds of things. People open doors, as you do with you when you access a building or part of an office, except that you can do it in your home if you want to, but just putting a tag on the door. Uh, and It'll go through your, through your uh, phone and turn things on. Turn on Bluetooth speakers. There's a gentleman who has a tag set up next to his bedside so that at night he just lays his phone on the tag. It um, gets rid of it, it. It sets it up so it doesn't ring. It turns down the illumination and it sets an alarm clock in his phone for oh, the next boy. morning. So you can get <laughs> it came from all yeah, sorts no, of no, stuff. Rich. Pinpoint Rich marketing. Um, I'll show you what we're going to be doing with that in a moment. And product authentication is uh, is what we're into. There's all sorts of stuff. There are smart, what they call smart posters. So in marketing, you just put your phone up next to the poster, and you can download free music because it's a music group coming to town. Um, all sorts of information. We are doing it with honey. Now this you can't see very well. This is a very expensive jar of manuka honey, and that's got a rather large uh, trusted tag underneath the name, normal label. Obviously, this is just in the middle of testing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're using the small circus tags on the side. That will enable us to do the following. We can ship these honeys to Hong Kong or Beijing or wherever, which they're very popular. And when somebody walks up and puts their phone next to it, it will authenticate that it's the right product. Now, on the, the non-trusted tags, people could copy that. On this tag, they can't. And this jar of honey sells for $75. So when you're talking about a product like that, people steal it, all kinds of things happen. But they know they're getting value. So this is all part of what was started out in Tasmania as a place of origin, otherwise known as a domain, like Champagne in France. So it's a way of proving the product is real. We also have tags that if you open it up, not in this case, because that's got security seal on it, but tags that will uh, stop working or do things when you, uh, if you crack the seal or crack the antenna. Uh, this is not inexpensive, but for a product like that, uh, it offers the ability to receive the scan, 
authenticate that it's a legitimate scan and then send back some information directly to the phone. So it'll say, yes, you've purchased a jar 250 grams of the Nuke Plus from the Great Honey people in Tassie and it's authentic. And if you want more information, touch somewhere on the screen and we'll take you to a new link somewhere else. Um, download videos, download uh, PDFs, anything you can think about. Once you've set up the relationship, now what's interesting about this is when you move it into really high value products, let's say, um, you're a person who likes malt whiskey, so you end up buying yourself a $150 jar of malt whiskey. One of those jars that you see downtown somewhere that are serialized. So it says serial number and then there's like an eight digit serial number. We can link the serial number to the tag. The tag can't be duplicated and the serial number is part of our database. So as a consequence, when Mr. Jones somewhere in the world um, opens up the jar for his friends, or uh, the bottle rather, for his friends, he scans the side and we can send a message saying, yes, Mr. Jones, thank you for uh, you know, buying our whiskey. We hope you enjoy it and blah, 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 and whatever. So it's a big, what they call high touch marketing. And we can move into a specific product, a specific jar, plus at the same time that we're confirming the brand, the kind of uh, uh, level of quality, if you will, provenance, we can also pull back analytics. So depending on how well, whatever. We can pull back analytics, depending on what level of, of, of uh, so software we're using. So you said you can track where the uh, consumer is? Yeah, is. within within either I can do what I do with Google Analytics pretty easily. That's what country and what what what, what operating system and what size device and a few other things. Uh, to go past that, you need an app where you need to have their permission because of privacy issues and things. So I can see you, you can actually track sales versus consumption. Yes, we can. Because once it's open, you know it's been consumed. And you can see where your target audience is and what they're doing with it by putting on the shelf as a, a keepsake or whether they're actually drinking it. Exactly. In the case of honey, for example, there is in one specific instance a contract that has a, 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 a spe specified sales area. So if you're selling in Hong Kong and one jar shows up in somebody's place in Beijing, we don't care because they just Seriously. took it home for his grandma. Mm -hmm. But if 40 cases show up, yeah. now we're talking about a violation of sales contract. So there's lots of other stuff, but um, yeah, exactly. They also make now, which we're looking at, at working with some people, a tag that does this, it's a trusted tag, plus it has a temperature sensor in it. So we're talking about shipping Tasmanian abalone that actually ends up being tracked for its temperature, and it's pure, ab pure abalone from, you know, from Tassie, it's not locked off. The level of fakes now is several billions of dollars involved with, with uh, Australia and New Zealand. I'm talking like 10 not a few. So uh, they've just arrested a whole bunch of people in China. Well, they're always doing that, but yeah. Um, smartphones. If you have an iPhone, it won't do any of the things I talked about. Not yet. It's equipped to do it, but because Apple's being Apple, uh, whatever, um, they really want Apple Pay to work because they're going after the, well, they've always been in the money business, but now they're really going after the money business. So they want Apple Pay to work everywhere. So they've got their phone locked down, so that it works with Apple Pay. Once they get enough penetration and users in that marketplace, they'll probably open up the phone because the phone is capable. So right now, uh, pretty much any phone that you use other than the iPhone um, will will do what we you know do what I'm showing you here. This is a because uh, we're focused on China. These are the kinds of uh, smartphones and what they are. Samsung Galaxy is very popular. Now, 12% does look like much. You you wouldn't be all that happy until you look at how much 12% is <laughs> in China. That's a hell of a lot of phones. And all of these phones will, will, uh, will do what we want. Uh, we'll, we'll, yeah. And by the way, with commands, to give you an example, to turn the lights down, to turn on your, blue, your Bluetooth speakers, um, set your alarm clock, um, do all sorts, you know, kick the dog out the door, whatever. All these commands, the tasks can be chained, so you can actually have a whole long, you know, concatenated, if you want to use that right term. You can string this stuff together, okay, and have it do multiple tasks from your phone, so your phone becomes very active. Anyhow, these are videos which I won't bore you with because I don't know how to activate them right now. But uh, one of them is about um, a day with NFC, and it's done by a Korean company, and it's extraordinary what they've done. These are examples of real use in Korea. And uh, the shopping is amazing. I mean, you've seen people now going into stores, reading barcodes and getting information about what the ingredients are, gluten-free and all that. Um, 
that's to some extent static and the QR codes and barcodes are kind of a pain sometimes. You've got to hold the phone in the right place. With NFC tags, you go, as I showed you, just swipe it and you're ready to go. Plus, you can have other kinds of dynamics involved. I think that's it. Yes. Um, professional reader. This is, we'll get you to the Reese website. You want to do that? And here are some tags which you can play with at home. These are all programmable, and you can program them with downloading an app, and so you can do all sorts of things. So, mm -hmm. enjoy. That's amazing. That's it. Questions for Larry? How, um, I guess in, in, in your work, have you come across how the likelihood of, um, say, pedestrians walking down George Street, Sydney or so, uh, with, a, with a reader device can, um, can uh, read your credit card? It's possible, uh, but not likely. It's not as much as, I mean, it's one thing to have somebody with a very, very high skill set do this in a controlled environment. But if you see this, if you use that, that tag, unless it's a really big tag and you're fairly close, you're not going to read it. You can't induce enough energy. Now, if you were walking around with a big, uh, a big coil and a battery in your, in your backpack, you might be able to get away with some of that. But There's a product called the Proxmark, um, which is basically exactly that. So <coughs> Credit card skimmers actually use. Yeah. Cost about a thousand dollars though. So you've got to steal a few credit cards to afford that. <laughs> Make it worth while. Yeah. <coughs> but uh, there's all sorts of stuff case. going on. You're <laughs> walking down the street. We're talking to some uh, realtors because a tag, a card, a realtor card with a tag that goes to a specific property. For example, there's a $1.2 million property for sale down in Dover. An abalone diver is selling it. He must be doing very well. Anyhow, it's a very large and very beautiful property, and it's the kind of uh, card with a tag that goes directly to that real estate agent's website that he set up for that $1.2 million property, because it's worthwhile at that commission level, and you just give the card out to high value, high asset value uh, people. So it's called high touch marketing. So it's specifically for you here. And how often do you grab a business card and put it in your pocket, which is right next to your phone, so it's pretty much put it in your pocket and it's opened up the website for you next time you open the I, I keep doing that because this is a card from the, I put the, this is from the other business, I put it in my pocket and it goes beep. <laughs> so there's that kind of a thing, um, there is a, a um, show, a cop show in the U.S., police show, police uh, whatever, uh, called Rizzoli and Isles and it's uh, two gals and they're looking good while shooting bad guys. And uh, they did some marketing in New York, and what they did is they put a tag on a window with some literature around it, it was on the inside, and people would come up and put their phone against it, so they would able to ask them questions about the series, plus they would give them a catalog of what was on sale on the window, which was related to the, whatever was going on. Um, it's engaging. We are talking to some realtors who want to have the tag on a window, and they'll put a property there, and so you just take your phone when you're walking down Elizabeth Street in North Hobart, Falls Real Estate, that's not them, but I'll use them. And you put, boop, and you don't have to go in and, which, what's the code? What product is it? Oh, I misspelled, uh, Winyard? Well, how do you spell it, with an I? No, none of that, you just go, boop, and it's done. So we can keep the tag alive by putting it in a database and then changing the content that we download when it's scanned. So one tag sitting on the glass could last through 10 properties for that way. So it's all reusable, it's just a matter of, uh, yeah. I can see the next level of geocaching coming on. Huh. <laughs> oh, there's a lot. And Munzies. Yeah, there are people that are using these tags uh, to control uh, home carer visits. Because if you stick okay. this tag on the wall, yep. the only way you're going to scan it is by walking in there and being in the room. Physical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's access control, there's also confirmation, yep. uh, uh, staffing, uh, management issues, all sorts of stuff. Time and attendance can, systems, yes. Yeah, there's a whole lot. I mean, <laughs> the tag only has 144 bytes of data, but boy, you can make it do stuff hmm. once you bring it in, once you bring it into a server. Well, I, uh, uh, Trump tweets only 160. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's making a lot of trouble with that. And, and these go up to multiple Ks, but they get really expensive. You're talking about multiple dollars. This tag, the trusted tag, which is one or another somewhere, uh, they're about 75 cents, 80 cents, so you don't want to put it on a cheap product. Okay. This tag in volume is down around 24 cents, and there are cheaper tags from, from some Chinese makers, but there's some issues with that. Uh, this is SmartTracks, probably the best in the world. It's a company from uh, the Netherlands, so they just 
they virtually don't have any errors and problems. And when they do ship them out, they come on a roll, so they'll just put a black mark across the tag so you know that it's not live and won't work. Okay. So, Larry, here's a question. Yeah, here's saying you integrate them into business cards. So if the fact tag was close to your phone, it could actually get your phone going, and if it was able to load information into your phone, yes. it could provide remote access through your phone. So it makes you sort of wonder how long it takes before some of the devil works out a good scanning system with business cards, go to a, go to a convention, hand out 5,000 cards. <coughs> and see what happens. Well, yeah. you, may, you probably should only scan the cards of people you know, but actually this is very, very useful in Asia for that, the, the, the good side of that whole thing because it's really difficult to type in some unusual names and things. And the cards can be loaded with, a, with links that give you Chinese characters. So if you're all Chinese and you're in Beijing, you don't even have to worry about typing all that stuff. It's much more complicated to type Chinese characters into a phone than it is in Roman language, you know, our alphabet. So there are people that simply have a, a tag embedded or put on their card, and you go boop, and it goes right into the contacts. It loads it automatically into the contacts. Everything, no errors. No problem with phone numbers and none of that stuff. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's all over the place. You do, I think the app, you do actually have to choose to say open the link or add to the contacts. It's not like, it doesn't, swiping the card basically says open this link or, yeah, so it doesn't do, it doesn't it, do, it doesn't do anything for you automatically. Yeah. Okay. Some of the software is set up with an opt-in, yeah. the kind of thing you talked about, much of it's not. So my car, my phone says I'm swiping and checking in that. I'm using. I actually rewrite tags just for experimental purposes to go to specific web pages and things. So in my case, I just put activate NFC and don't ask, and it just you know goes zipping along. But what Scott's saying is absolutely right. Uh, it'll say always or once only, or there's some opt-in uh, opt-in thing for, um, for many of the many of the activities. So cool. anything else? Can we show our appreciation of Larry, please? Yeah. Thanks, Larry. Um, you can stretch your legs and we'll set up with Scott. Okay. Yeah.